So this is a segment that gets Arsenal and Manchester City fans excited. We're still talking football. We turn our attention to the English Premier League. The three-horse race for the English Premier League title might have been narrowed to two after Liverpool again dropped points, leaving them five adrift of leaders Arsenal with three rounds to play. Arsenal seemed to be in it for the long haul after holding on for a massive 3-2 win over North London rivals Tottenham Hotspur on Sunday. Although in second, Manchester City just the need to win all remaining games to lift the trophy and they showed no sign of letting up as they won 2 0 at Nottingham Forest. Arsenal manager Mike Arteta continues to highlight his team's determination and bravery. How much you want it, how much they want it. Uh, don't feel sorry for yourself. It's part of the journey, it's part of when you are at the, at the highest competitive level, you're going to have disappointment. The margin is so small, they're not going to go always for you. And then how you react to that. And, and face, face the challenge, face the opportunity, and, uh, and be brave. And I think this team has a lot of courage and, and determination to, to make it happen. Yeah, Mikel Arteta seeking his first uh, major, major success here with this Arsenal team. Meanwhile, Manchester City boss Pep Guardiola knows the outcome is in their hands, but he has acknowledged that even a draw could end their title push. But the four games left is like a <laughs> climb a big mountain, so... It's a really tough game, so <laughs> the only thing is still we extend one more week. It's in our hands. So only can do. So it's quite similar to what happened in the past with Liverpool. So we draw a game, we are not going to win the Premier League. So and it's what it is. So today we extend this chance in a difficult, difficult, tough, tough, tough game. And uh, yeah, now prepare, rest a little bit and prepare, uh, prepare the next game. Now, Liverpool were held to a two-all draw at West Ham's London Stadium. And while he says he isn't angered by the result, Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp knows how difficult it will be for his team to win the title from their current position. I said before, we, we need to win our games. We didn't win the game. That doesn't improve our situation now massively. They play. Do they look like they will lose two or three games? No, I don't think so. But <sighs> right... Honestly, and not angry or whatever, right? What you want about that, I don't think about it. It's just we have to win football games and let's see what that means in the end. That means from now on, what do we have now? 75 points, is that right? 84 possible. And I think it's a good target to try to do that. And that's what is my, will be my, my attitude, my, my mindset. And we will see what that means. It's a while ago that somebody became champion with 84 points, I think. Jurgen Klopp, the Liverpool boss there. Arsenal uh, in front on 80 points. They're just one ahead of Manchester City, who have a game in hand. And uh, Liverpool are five points adrift at the moment. Aston Villa, Tottenham and Manchester United occupying fourth, fifth and sixth at the moment. Here's a run into the end of the season for the teams. Man City uh, with four games, remember. Uh, Wolves, Fulham, Tottenham and West Ham. Arsenal and Liverpool only have three games remaining. The Gunners to face Bournemouth, Man United and Everton. And Liverpool will have Tottenham, Aston Villa and Wolves as their remaining fixtures. Let's get the thoughts now of our European football correspondent, Simon Evans. Simon, welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. Always great to have you on the show. Um, let's get Liverpool out of the way since they have almost taken themselves out of the, the title race. Your thoughts, on, uh, your thoughts on, on, on how their season has disintegrated? Yeah, I think there's an unavoidable uh, topic here, which is really Liverpool's form since Jurgen Klopp announced that he was going to be leaving the club at the end of the season. Um, I think, you know, we've, we've seen managers do this in the past and it, it can affect performance. And I think it has in Liverpool's case. I mean, we can't go inside the players' heads. But when your charismatic leader says, I'm just too tired to carry on, I need, I need to pack this in, uh, I'll stay around until the end of the year and then I'm gone, I think it's bound to affect uh, the morale and the attitudes in the teams. And you start to see little things happening that didn't happen too much before. There was a sideline row between Salah and uh, Klopp. We don't know exactly what was said. But a lot of gesticulating and, and clearly something not good there between them. 
and um, you know Liverpool just haven't haven't finished the season well, and and you can't escape the fact that this has happened after Klopp said he was going to leave. I don't know why he did that. To be honest, I don't know why he didn't wait till the end of the season and then make his announcement. But uh, whatever reasons he had for thinking that that would be a good way to do it uh, have backfired. Mm. Well, I, I guess from the standpoint of the club itself, maybe he could have informed them privately about his, his plans, but to announce publicly to the team and everyone else, I, I think I take your point there, Simon. And as you just mentioned, no one knows what was said between Klopp and uh, Salah. Um, a lot of speculation there. But every Liverpool fan, Simon, would be disappointed with Salah and uh, his dip in form in, in the past month or so. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it hasn't been there. And I think it's, it's, you know, his benching has been justifiable based on that form, I think. Um, we talked about that the, the other day. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's clear he's a player who can still come on and change games and so on. But he just hasn't been, hasn't been delivering. And uh, he was asked actually in the mix zone by some journalists about what had gone on in this argument with Klopp. And he said, there'll be fire if I talk about it. Mm -hmm. and, and was sort of laughing about it. So... Clearly, there's there's some issue there. I don't think he likes not being in the team. I would suspect that's what it's the core of it. Um, a lot of players are like that, especially players who've been, you know, world stars like Mohamed Salah. But uh, you do wonder what the future holds for Liverpool. You know, the, all the all the speculation is that um, Arnie Slot from Feyenoord is going to come in as the next manager, another Dutch manager in English football. They don't have a great record, by the way, Dutch managers in English football. But, you know, a youngish manager coming in, a new face, and, and will they do a little bit of uh, rebuilding of the squad? But uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be difficult for them. It's not quite like United after Ferguson, but it, Klopp is going to be a, a big absence for that club. Yes, yeah, Simon, there's a term in cricket called scoreboard pressure when a team is batting second and, and chasing. Arsenal have the points on the board. Would Man, Man City be feeling any scoreboard pressure here, uh, given the fact that they do have a game in hand, but they still have to get the result? Yeah, that game in hand sort of changes the calculation a bit, doesn't it? Bring sort of Duckworth Lewis into it, if you want to carry on the analogy, because, you know... City having that extra game just gives them that little bit of a cushion. You know, Guardiola saying, oh, if we draw a game, we can't win. Well, that's not quite the case, I think. Uh, you know, they can afford maybe one little slip. But um, it does give them the advantage. It does. But, um, you know, Arsenal, the way they went about their, their business this weekend, I think answered a, a lot of doubters about them as well. Yeah, and I guess you would be pointing when you make that comment, Simon, to the fact that statistically... There was so much going for Tottenham in this game and they weren't able to pull the results out against the Arsenal team that was robust and determined. Um, ball possession, Tottenham had more. Goal attempts, Tottenham had more. They had more corner kicks, they had more attacks, they had more dangerous attacks, Tottenham. Yet still, Arsenal were able to get a result that they needed. Yeah, and there was a feeling about the game that, you know, last year some people sort of used the word chokers about Arsenal, which I think was unfair about last year. But they, that clearly that team hadn't been in a position of a title running really before, and Arteta hadn't been either. And I think that probably hurt them, people suggesting that about, about last season. And this was the kind of game where if you think Arsenal were still chokers, this was the kind of game they could have lost. The Derby game, even after going 3-0 up, they sort of let Tottenham back in a little bit. You start, your mind starts to think, no, surely not. You know, this would kill them if they were to let, let the points slip away from a 3-0 position. But they, they saw it out. Um, some good stuff in their performances. The one thing, the one player that really stood out for me in that game was Kai Havertz, actually, a player who people have written off. Um, the ball he played for Saka for the goal uh, on the on the counter attack, which is a beautiful finish from Saka. But Havertz was just so composed and calm on the ball, um, and then looked up and picked him out, picked Saka out with a beautiful pass. He's a quality player and he's just not settled in English football very quickly. And we find this with some players sometimes. They do, do take longer. And uh, I think he's, uh, he's coming into his own. We see it uh, right here. He just takes his time, has a look around, sees what's going on. And then that is an perfectly weighted and delivered pass. And, and great work from Saka to finish it. But um, Havertz was, was outstanding there, I thought.
Yeah, of course, both players, you know, doing what they have to do, Simon, to get the job done for their team Arsenal and pick up all the points. Um, Saka was quoted as saying, there's not much room for error. We've got experience now. We've learned from our lessons last year and we're ready for the last three games. The last three games are Bournemouth, Everton and, of course, Manchester United. Many feel as if, you know, the Manchester United game is the one that Arsenal will have to be very wary about because against a Manchester United team, despite the results of Manchester United this season, you know, when you come up against, when a team is suffering and they come up against a big team, they somehow prove themselves. Do you think that's one of the fixtures that Arsenal will have to pay keen attention to? Well, I guess on paper it is the toughest one, although I have to say I watched Manchester United's game yeah. against uh, Burnley on Saturday. And I was just absolutely shocked. I mean, Burnley were in the relegation zone. I've watched them be outclassed by teams. They're the team I support, so I watch a lot of their games. And, and I've watched them be outclassed by teams throughout this season. And they were just enjoying playing at Old Trafford without any trouble at all, really. I mean, they got a 1-1 draw. They could have easily won the game. United look very average, I have to say. It's, 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 it's pretty sad to see them in, in, in that sort of state. Um, but yes, on paper, that is the toughest game for Arsenal. Um, the real thing that might really be such a blow to Arsenal is there's a strong possibility here that Arsenal win all three of those games and then don't win the Premier League. Yeah, and that... that'll be a really heavy blow for them. Yeah, really heartbreaking. You talk about Manchester United and all I can think about, Simon, is the fact that Manchester United don't get the results that they want. And then I don't know where Eric Ten Hag comes out from with those responses when asked by the media. It's as if he's the only one that's not seeing what's happening. And while you're talking about Manchester United, again, he was, of course, occupied my mind because I'm like, yeah, and Manchester United not doing what the fans want. And, of course, Eric Ten Hag having a lot to say about God alone knows what. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talk about Ten Hag's future, isn't there? And there's a lot of uh, people who defend him and say, like, you know, the club's got so many problems, which is true. They're going through a major rebuild now. So is this the time to, you know, it would be unfair not to give him a chance to work with a better squad and so on. But I looked at the, the team that they had on the field, the formation they played. It was almost like they were playing four at the back and four or five up front and then Christian Eriksen in between them in midfield. Some, there was no midfield almost. You know, Fernandez plays in attack or wherever he wants to play. Yeah. And Eriksen was, Eriksen was doing all the work on his own in midfield. And Burnley just had time to pass it around. They, I mean, they look very, very comfortable. I mean, they're a better team than their league position uh, suggests. But still, at Old Trafford, I mean, all the Burnley fans I was talking to were saying... They'd never, ever seen an easier game for Burnley at Old Trafford. And, and, and you know, that's on Ten Hag, I think, when the formation of the team looks completely, yeah. you know, out of kilt, really. Yeah, Simon, I don't want this segment to end without us talking about the defending champions, Manchester City. Of course and not. They have a game in hand. The only thing that is on my mind and worrying me, Edison, of course, limping off. Um, he had a sling on his left arm, so, you know... Everybody is concerned. He is our first choice uh, keeper. And I think that would be something that's weighing on the coach's mind because not having Edison for these crucial games can be a blow. Yeah, I mean, their backup options are, are, are solid goalkeepers, but there isn't any goalkeeper in the world who can do what Edison can do with his feet. You know, and his passing and his distribution is so key to how City play. I mean, we talk about teams playing out of the back. City play out from the goalkeeper because he can hit a 30-yard pass to feet. He's unbelievable. So he would be a massive blow if he, if he were to be out. But, you know, the options City have elsewhere in the team, I mean, they can afford to lose one or two players. This is one position they really can't afford to lose a player from. So that would be a big factor in this, in this uh, run-in for the title if they were without Edison for, for a game or two. Yeah, now that that negative discussion is out of the way, Erling Haaland, he scored! Simon, he's back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And took his goal very well. A little bit better than the uh, League Two striker, as uh, Roy Keane was calling him <laughs> not so long ago. But, I mean, good footwork. For, you know, for a big, tall, strong guy, that's great footwork there. And, yeah, it was a tough game for City, actually, because I think at this stage of the year, and I'm not sure people who don't follow, like, the Premier League very, very closely, 
going to always understand that at this stage of the year, it's harder to play teams in the bottom four or five than it is to play mid-table mid teams. Mid-table teams are safe. They've nothing to worry about. Those teams like Forest are fighting for survival. Every every ball they're going for, they've got to be giving 110% for it, and they do. And uh, Forest are, 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 are in danger of going down because Burnley could could catch them. And... Uh, and they made it difficult for City, but City's quality did show in the end there with that finish from Haaland especially. Yeah, OK, Simon, we're going to leave it there. Um, really intriguing finish to the English Premier League uh, title race uh, this season, and we'll be watching it in the coming weeks. Thanks uh, for talking to us, and we'll be in touch, I'm sure. Thank you. All the best. Cheers. OK, and we did say it's a very heavy football programme on the zone today. When we come back, we talk, we talk UEFA Champions League football and semi-final action Tuesday.